What's up, Facebook family and friends? I just want to do a part two on interceding and intercession prayer today. The Lord has laid this in my spirit, and I want to share this thought with you. This video won't be very long, but the Lord laid upon my heart last week about intercessory prayer, interceding, and I went on a journey through the Word of God of different men and women in the Word of God that lived a life of intercessory and as I had read Moses and, and Abraham, Noah, and Jesus, above all, uh, is that great intercessor. He stands uh, at the right hand of the Father, interceding both day and night. Isaiah 53 teaches us, He bore all of our sins. He paid that price completely for us. And I, I began to go back to Noah, you know, and I began to, I commented on it just a little bit, elaborated on it. But I wanted to elaborate on this part the most today to be my focus. Jesus said that the coming of the Son of Man shall be like the days of Noah. He said the coming of the Son of Man shall be like the days of Lot. And I began to meditate on that. And the Lord had intercessors uh, in Sodom and Gomorrah. He had intercessors not in Sodom and Gomorrah. He had intercessors for Sodom and Gomorrah. He had uh, an intercessor uh, for uh, in Noah's days. It was Noah, and he built the ark, and the gospel was for whosoever. But Noah and his family went in. The New Testament says that the Lord destroyed the Old Testament, saved Noah and eight persons in Second Peter 2. And I, I began to read this and meditate on it. The Lord destroyed the whole city of Sodom and Gomorrah for their sin. But... Lot was in the midst of them, and God moved for Lot because of Abraham, because his uncle was a righteous man. He walked with the Lord. He was a friend of God and a man of faith, and before the Lord ever destroyed that city, he remembered and he knew that Lot was in that city, and he came to Abraham first, and he said, Abraham, should I hide this thing from you? And he begins to show Abraham. But Abraham began to plead for the city. And I want to read this because it's so important for you and I to plead uh, with the Lord, to stand in the gap, to intercede for lost souls. He's coming back, praise God, just like he said. And in the book of Peter 2, or chapter 2, excuse me, I want to encourage you to read it. It says that there will be scoffers and mockers at the coming of the Lord, saying, I've heard it all my life. He delays his coming, but he slacks not concerning his promise, but he's long-suffering, not willing that any should perish. Praise God. But he is a man of righteousness. The Lord is the, the ultimate righteousness. And he is faithful. And he's coming back for a bride that has adorned herself and made herself ready as a chaste virgin. And I want to go and just briefly read um, over how Abraham began to plead for the city. And that's what we're to do, to plead for our lost loved ones, to pray that the prodigals come home. He's married to the backslider. He still extends mercy today. If you know somebody lost, plead the blood and begin to cry out and lift your voice like a trumpet. God is able to open the eyes of them that are blind, to open the ears that they can have a spiritual ear, to be spiritually awoken. Come on, somebody. We once was lost in our sin, but thank God for his rich in mercy. He's rich in mercy and grace. Hallelujah. We were made nigh by the blood. So uh, I begin to read this, and the Lord began to deal with Abraham. And it says that Abraham drew near, and he said, um, Lord, he began to plead. And he said, Lord, will you also destroy the righteous among the wicked? See, there's a separation there. The righteous and the wicked are judged differently. The Bible says that when the Lord began to move for the children of Israel, when they were in bondage and their cries began to reach his ears, he said, my people are in bondage and I have heard their cries. Come on, somebody. Their cries awoken the master. We have to let our cries awaken the master. But it says that, um, he poured out the plagues upon the Egyptians 
and upon those that were lost and wicked. And the Bible says in Exodus, there was a great difference between the children of Israel and the Egyptians. And there was light done in Goshen where the children of Israel were. And there was protection and there was provision. But the wrath of God was coming down upon the Egyptians. The New Testament says the wrath of God comes down upon the children of disobedience. But those that are, that are covered in the blood and walking in grace and walking in obedience, praise God, we have an inheritance with Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. There's a separation between the chaff and the wheat, the righteous and the unrighteous. But it says, Abraham says, Lord, will you destroy the righteous among the wicked? And he says, Lord, will you spare 50 righteous within the city? And he says, there's not 50 righteous. And Abraham pleads, Lord, would you spare the city if there was if there was 40 and he says that there's not 40 and he says 30 would you spare the city abraham wasn't just pleading for lot but he was pleading for that whole city because he knew that there was souls in that city hundreds of souls hallelujah and uh so then he begins to um he begins to say if there's 10 righteous and then it says that um, the Lord says, the Lord went his way and left communion, but the Lord remembered Lot. So he goes uh, and he sends out his angels to go into the city to search out the city. And it says that the sin was so great that it came up to heaven. How many know that in the book of Matthew, Jesus said, because iniquity abound, the love of many will wax cold. Um study in Sodom. There was a lot of uh, perversion. There was a lot of sin. There was a lot of injust injustice. It wasn't safe to walk the streets at night. There was a lot of rioting. We see a lot of these things in our day, exactly what's going on right now. And uh, so Lot was threatened by two men and they tried to come in, but an angel Two angels were with Lot, and they shut the door on them. And uh, you know, the Lord began. The Lord began to speak to Lot, and He began to tell him to leave the city; that it's going to be destroyed by fire. And He gives them instructions, and He urges them out of the city. So Lot and his family leave the city, and fire and brimstone fall down on the city. And uh, I just want to read this. Um, it says, "For we will destroy this place in Genesis." 19 and tw uh, 13 it says for we will destroy this this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the lord and the lord has sent us to destroy it and lot went out and spoke unto his sons in law and married his daughters and they got up out of the place for the lord would destroy this city but he seemed as one that mocked unto his son-in-laws. You know, it's just like in this day and time, there's scoffers and there's mockers and they're rejecting the truth. They want to withstand the truth. Paul said that they would withstand the truth just as Moses was withstood. They want to resist it. The, Paul said in Timothy that, that some would depart from the faith and depart from the truth, heaping to themselves lies, false teachers having itchy ears. And this is exactly what's going on. The people in Sodom did not want to hear it. But it says, the Lord, on down verse 16, it says, The Lord being merciful unto him, he brought him forth and set him without the city. And it came to pass that he brought aboard, and he escaped for the life. He says, Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in the plain. Escape the mountain, lest you be consumed. And it says, Behold, now thy servant has found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me, saving my life. I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me, and I die. So the Lord is giving him these instructions. And it says, The Lord reigned upon Sodom and Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord of heaven, and overthrew the cities and the plain and the habitations of the city which grew up on the ground. For his wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. Now I want to read to you what Luke says right here. I want to read to you what Luke says. And it says, Jesus said, and, and as the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat and they drank and married their wives and were given in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Because they didn't heed to the warnings, because they didn't believe the truth, they believed delusion and a strong lie 
They didn't know that the rain was coming till the rain began to fall. The Bible says the signs are to the believer that it's coming. It's not. It's getting closer. And it says, likewise, also shall it be in the days of Lot. They did eat and they drank and they bought and they sold and they planted and they built it. In other words, they laid up treasures on earth and not treasures in heaven. They didn't have their sights and affections on things above. They weren't preparing for this destruction to come. It says, but the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Come on, somebody. You know, the Bible says that in the end time when he destroys the earth, it's not going to be by water next time, but it's going to be by fire. And he's going to purge this old world. And I want to read to you. I want to go back to Genesis 6. Because earthquake, earthquakes, pestilence, and plagues, those are the signs of sorrow, but not the signs of the end time. Let me go to Genesis 6. Real quick, I want to read this. But again, it says, Noah felt grace in the eyes of the Lord. And it says, Noah walked with God. We have to walk with the Lord in this hour. And even in Daniel 9, it says, Know your God. And it says, They that know their God have understanding and they do exploits. Right in the middle of it all. We know our God. We obey Him. We will do exploits. He is with us and He will protect us. He protected Lot. But it says, And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and the daughters were born, the sons of God saw the daughters of men, and they were fair, and they took them wives of which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit will not always strive with man, for, the, for also flesh, yet his days shall be numbered a hundred and twenty years. How many days are our, are our days numbered? How many days do we have left? How many days do you have left? If the Lord don't come back, uh, we're not promised tomorrow. Uh, you know, life is like a vapor. We have to be ready. But it says that there were giants in those days, which were Nephilim's fallen angels. And it says that, um, that God saw the wickedness in verse 5. Of men, and it was great in the earth, and every imagination of thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he made the earth, and it grieved him at heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man, beast, creeping things, fowl of the earth, for it repented him. And it says, But Noah felt grace in the eyes of the Lord. And Noah was an intercessor because he built the ark for 120 years. He took that calling to be separated from the world. The Bible says, Come out from among them. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Noah came out from the world. Noah was planning and building. Noah had a vision from God. Noah was obeying God. The Bible says that Noah kept all the commandments of God. Come on, somebody. So he gets these instructions about the, the ark. And the Lord says, I will establish my covenant with you. And the Lord's giving him these instructions. And it says in 6 and 22, Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, he did. And so he's building this ark and, and the, the floods is coming. And, the, and he, he gathers everything and he's preparing and the floods is coming. But you know, they rejected Noah's message. He was laughed to scorn. He walked a path alone because they didn't want to hear it. They rejected the truth. And that's what they're doing in this hour. There's mockers and scoffers. But they weren't prepared when the flood came. And Jesus said, I have a cat behind me. <laughs> but Jesus said, um... It's the, the coming of the Son of Man will be like the days of Noah. And it said, And the waters prevailed in Genesis 7 and 18. The waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went upon the face of the waters. And the waters prevailed upon the earth, and all the high hills and the whole heaven was covered. You know, I just want to encourage you in the Lord today to intercede. Um, because God himself shut the door to the ark and no man could open it. 
not even Noah. Jesus said, I am the door, the way, and the only way. He is the door. He is the key. He's the way. He's the mediator between God and man. And it says in Matthew chapter 25 of the ten virgins, it says five were wise and five were foolish. The five that were foolish did not have oil in their lamps. They did not have the anointing. They were not good stewards of the things that God gave them. They weren't prepared. So when the when the cry was made and the bridegroom came, they were left behind. They beat up on the door, but the Bible says that God himself shut the door and no man could open it. That's eternity. Just like he told Lazarus. He said Lazarus was in hell. And he lifted up his eyes. And he didn't ask for his Cadillac, his riches. He didn't ask for his fortune and fame and things. He cried for one drop of water. He said, I am in anguish in these flames. And he began to cry out to Father Abraham. And he saw him in his bosom. But he said, there's a great gulf between us. God shuts the door. No man can open it. And it, we're at a time to pray and travail. Because these things are going to fall upon cities. It says in the word of God in the four gospels even in peter's revelation in jude uh in paul's revelation jesus all of them uh warned us of these things and it says that there'll be pestilence and famine and earthquakes um there will be commotions and uh, this is the beginning it's going to get more and more intense and uh the, these people that re rebel and are turned over to the delusion and a strong lie and a reprobate mind if your loved ones uh in the midst of that earthquake it's, it can destroy whole cities so it's important to intercede and travail it's so important and i just want to encourage you with this word today god bless you all